Hello and welcome to Premiere Gal. In this video, you're going to learn how I created this sweet double exposure effect in After Effects from start to finish. First, let me tell you what assets I used so you can follow along. I used this image of Kimson from Unsplash. All the images here on Unsplash are in the public domain, so you can download it and use it in any project that you want. And for the background here, I use this free stock video time lapse shot from Pixabay. You can use any videos from Pixabay, everything is in the public domain. And then I use Production Crate Light Leaks. I used two light leaks to make this effect, and I've linked to both the specific leaks I used in the description box below. All right, so download the image and video assets that you're going to use and let's get started. To start, I pulled in this portrait image into Photoshop and I made the background transparent. If you want to learn how to make the background transparent, you can watch my other Photoshop tutorial on how to remove the background with the quick selection tool and I'll link to that below. Next, I imported all my assets into a media folder here. It has the Photoshop portrait, the background, and the lens flares. And now let's create a new composition. Let's make it 1920 by 1080 pixels, 30 frames per second. And let's make the duration six seconds. And I will call it main composition. Then let's drag in our Photoshop file here into this main composition. And let's use the transform tools to reposition the headshot on the left of the frame until it looks right. The background here is black, but it's actually transparent. Here, just below in the composition window, you can see that it's actually transparent if you click that on and off. Now let's add in some text here. Now this is completely optional, but it's good to know if you're considering using this effect for an opening credit sequence. Let's use the horizontal type tool here to type out the words double exposure. I'm using a font called Burnaby. It's an Adobe Typekit font, so you can sync it to your Creative Cloud. And I'm going to make the top layer of text just a bit smaller from the bottom, and I'll adjust the letting, which is the space between the lines, until it looks right. Now let's select both of these layers, right click, and select Pre-Compose. And this will create a new composition with both the layers in it, and let's call it Photo and Text. Now nested within the main composition is the photo and text composition. And here is where it all starts to come together. Now from the project panel, just drag in the city backdrop here to be underneath the photo and the text composition. Now select this movie background layer and hit enter to edit the name and let's call it background exposure. And while this is selected, we're going to change the track mat here to alpha mat. And what this does is it fills in the background here into the photo and text layers. Now let's bring in more detail back to the image so it doesn't look so flat. Select the photo and text layer and hit Command D on your keyboard. If you're on a Mac, it's Control D on a PC to duplicate it. Then you can turn the eye back on so you can see it. Now using the rectangle tool, you can draw a mask over the first half of the head in the text. And what we're going to do now is hit F on your keyboard while this layer is selected, and you can feather this out as much as you want so it blends in nicely with the image below. And then you can hit T on your keyboard to activate the opacity which controls the transparency. So the best way I try to remember this is T stands for transparency. So let's lower the transparency down to around 65. So now we're going to create a gradient background and then I will show you how to add lens flares, camera movement, and some pretty cool in and out animations. So for the gradient background, let's right click here on the empty space and select create a new solid. And then you can pull it to be the bottom most layer. Then from effects and presets, search for the gradient ramp effect and drag and drop it on to this layer. And then from effect controls, let's select radial ramp and let's swap the color so the white is in the center. Now from the comp window, you can move the start point here down to the center of the image and the bottom point, you can move it off just by using your mouse. So now the colors become more blended and I think I wanna change the black to a purple color and I think this is starting to look like I want it to look. 
Now, if we go back to our composition here and we play it back, it's starting to look pretty awesome, but I would say that I wanna add a little bit of movement to make it more dynamic. So first, let's go ahead and check the cube, which is activating 3D layers on all of the layers except the white background solid. So this enables us to animate it with a camera layer. Now, right click on the empty space here again and create a new camera. From the camera layer, we're going to toggle down to open up the transform tools and select all of the transform parameters. And then you're going to hit the toggle animation stopwatch on one layer and it creates a starting key point at all of the parameters at the beginning of the comp. Now let's move the CTI to the very end of the composition and then you're going to go to the composition window and hit C on your keyboard repeatedly until you get the camera Z tool and click and push in and you can zoom in and move and control how big the image is as well as the text. And then you can hit C again on your keyboard until you get the camera X, Y tool to position this right or left on the frame. And once you have it in place, if you scroll the CTI back to the beginning and play it back, you can see that it animates and moves all together. Now let's drop in some light leaks. Let's drop in this green light leak at the top. And this is a lower res version. This is why it's one of the free light leaks. And I'm going to scale it up to frame and now change the blend mode to screen, which removes all of the black from this effect, leaving just the color. So let's also drop the opacity to 50 so it's not so intense. And because this light leak is only so long, it doesn't fit the entire duration of our composition. Let's also drop in a purple light leak here and let's do the exact same thing. Let's change the blend mode to screen and then also reduce the opacity to 50%. And now let's play it back. You can see that the light leaks added some more dynamism to the shot and it's looking pretty good. And of course, it's up to you if you wanna have the light leaks at the top. If you want it to only affect the background, you can also move the leaks to below the background exposure layer. So the leaks are only in the background, but it's totally up to you. I just wanna let you know that you can do that. And the last step is creating our in and out animations with adjustment layers. So let's right click to create a new adjustment layer, right click again to create another one. Let's hit enter to rename the first adjustment layer to in for in animation. And then let's name the second one out for out animation. Now let's bring them to be just below the camera layer here in our composition. With both of these layers selected, go to effects and presets and search for exposure under color correction and double click to apply them to both of the layers. Then search for fast blur and double click again to apply them to both layers. Now let's start with the in animation. Under the exposure effect, turn on the bypass linear light conversion. Then set the master keyframe of when you want the shot to be fully exposed by hitting the toggle animation watch. Then pull the CTI back to the beginning and increase the exposure until we don't see the face at all. It's just white. So that's gonna be around six. Of course, it depends on the image that you're using. So this may vary. So now when we play it back, it goes from being completely overexposed to perfect exposure. Now to make it even more interesting, let's keyframe the blurriness to start at zero just before it's fully exposed. And let's pull it back to the beginning here and set the fast blur blurriness to 60. Also be sure to make sure that the repeat edges is selected. So now when we play it back, it adds a little bit of blurriness as the image exposes in. Now let's do the same thing for the out animation. Let's first move this out animation layer over towards the end of the clip and let's do the same thing. Let's set a keyframe on the exposure when we want the animation to begin and then pull it all the way to the end to set the exposure at around six. And then let's do the exact same thing to the blurriness. Let's set it at zero and then pull the CTI to the end of the comp and set it at 60. So now when we play it back, we have our complete double exposure effect. And you can repeat this on multiple images if you want to create 
let's say an opening title sequence or something like that for a video series that you're working on. So that's it. If you guys have any questions at all, please do leave a comment below or be sure to join my gal video user group on Facebook where people can post technical questions. And if I can't answer, other pros are in there that are happy to help. And be sure to give this video a thumbs up to help my videos do better here on YouTube and subscribe hit that notification bell as well so you're notified when I make new videos and tutorials every week. If this video helped you out, you can also head over to patreon.com slash premiergal and leave me a tip. If you become a monthly patron, you can get some pretty awesome free templates each month that I design as rewards. And lastly, I've left some links to some double exposure video templates from Envato Market that I think you might also find useful that you should check out. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you very soon. Bye. Tell me if you feel it cause I know